afternoon everyone hello hello everyone how are you today how is everything with you your family hello Audrey hi mommy how are you hello Madge hello everyone that's join us good afternoon we are a little later than usual um, I had a little setback today Nonetheless, we are here. Uh, we are here to um, share a word of encouragement to our healthcare providers. Uh, thank you and welcome everyone to prayer for healthcare providers. Prayer for the frontliners, prayer for the teachers, prayer for everyone that has been affected in one way or the other by our international global turmoil. Uh, we want to encourage everyone to continue to seek the Lord in prayer. More than ever, more than ever, now more than ever, we want to continue to remain steadfast. More now than ever, we want to continue to exhibit faith without fear. Now, more than ever, we want to continue to exhibit love, joy, compassion. It continues to be gruesome. It continues to be difficult. It continues to be tiresome. It continues to be hard. The burden is tremendous. Nurses are getting tired. Doctors are getting exhausted. Resources are taxing. The lab technicians are getting frustrated. The housekeeper can't go on anymore. It continues to be gruesome. The mortician is very busy. The morgues are overflowing. It is difficult. It's hard. More and more, we need to trust and rely not on our own resources, but rely in prayer, relying on our neighbors, relying on exhibiting love, exhibiting compassion, relying on our faith over our fear. As we discussed yesterday, if you remembered, we talked about fear. When we are in fear, we are in constant fight and flight mode. Constant fight and flight mode increase cortisol level. As a result to increase cortisol levels, we now in turn has an immune system that is susceptible to anything, including COVID. So more than ever, we need to exhibit behaviors, positive behaviors, so that we can alleviate fear, depression, anxiety, despair. Yes, we can do it. Even in the midst of our difficulties, even in the midst of our hard times, even in our despair, even in our darkest moment, we want to continue to and not give up. We want to continue to try and find a song. We want to continue to try and find a psalm, a word of comfort. We want to reach out to someone that could give us a word of comfort. Well, I know right now we can't hug, we can't hold hand, but somebody can find something nice to say, to encourage you, to uplift your soul. So this is why we have this platform. This is why we have this sacred platform where every day we can come together and lay it all. Or if you can't come together, later on you can hear something that can give you a word of encouragement. Someone that is praying for you. Many people are praying for you. And so I can talk and say a whole lot of things, but I just want to welcome all of you, all of you that's here today, right now, joining us in prayer. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you, Mommy. Dr. Shav. Hello, Dr. Shav. Thank you, Dr. Shav, for what you do. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful platform. 
Yeftane. Hello, Yeftane. Thank you for joining us. And for everyone else that I cannot see that's joining us right now, thank you as well. So let's get right into our, our time together in worship. We're going to sing our favorite song, our favorite theme song. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no better promising than knowing and trusting that morning by morning new mercies we see. If you were here yesterday, this morning you woke up to a new mercy. If you were here the day before yesterday, yesterday you had a new mercy. And so we are grateful even in those difficult times that we can see mercy. Let's sing, right? Let's sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not, as thou hast been, thou forever will be. Sing with me, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endures thine own dear presence to cheer and to God. Strength for today, strength for today, and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine, blessings all mine, with ten thousand beside great is great is thy faithfulness great is his faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Lord, on to me. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. Welcome you all. Welcome all of you, everyone under my voice. Welcome to this beautiful platform, sacred platform, where we come together every day on behalf of our healthcare workers, on behalf of our frontline providers, our social workers, even the person working at the supermarket, they are indeed a frontline worker as well. I feel like they are more exposed than I am. 
as a healthcare provider. So I want to encourage you all to continue to pray for everyone that is involved one way or the other, involved in the process of getting things better for our global society. And so today, we are going to share our word, a devotional word of encouragement. We're going to share our devotional word of encouragement. And that's taken from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Since God has shown us great mercy, I beg you to offer your lives as a living sacrifice to him. Your offering must be only for God and pleasing to Him, which is the spiritual way for you to worship. Romans 12, verse 1. So let me read the devotional. It's entitled, A Thank You Note to God. A Thank You Note to God. When it comes to worship, who you are matters more than you do. If you are someone who deeply loves God and want to live a life that gives him joy, everything you do can be a form of worship. From singing a song of praise, to washing the dishes, to helping a friend or a loved one, every moment of your life becomes a thank you gift to God. Every moment of your life our lives become a thank you gift to God. Giving these simple gifts or offering comes naturally when you give God one big gift each day, the gift of your heart. This was a thank you gift given to God in return for all he'd given them. They give the first and best portion of produce they've harvested. They give the first and best portion of produce they've harvested, riches they'd receive, or the best animals from their flocks. After Jesus sacrificed his life for others, God asked people to follow his son's example by presenting him with the gifts of themselves. You don't have to die to give this gift. All you have to do is ask God to help you devote your body, your mind, and your heart to becoming who he wants you to be. That's how you turn an ordinary life into a dynamic living life of sacrifice. To worship God simply means to declare him worthy of the honor you are giving him. When you, are, when you give God your life, you are honoring him with the very best of what he has given you, your ultimate first fruit. In closure, worship is not just a gift to God, but it is also a gift to yourself. It helps you see things more clearly from God's point of view while you are enjoying a deeper sense of his presence in your life. I think that was encouraging, don't you think? From singing songs of praise to washing dishes, helping a friend or a neighbor, helping our sick patients, helping our co-workers, or helping our families, every moment of our lives become a thank you gift to God. So what do you have to be thankful for during this time, as we've been talking about the past few days? What do you have to be thankful for? I'm sure all of us have something, even now in this dark time, to be thankful for. But if you don't have anything to be thankful for, I want to remind you there is a gift of hope, Jesus has given us a gift of salvation that through him we could find courage and hope in his word. Let's go to our next song, Come Thou Fount, and then we're going to get into our prayer. Come Thou Fount. Thank you everyone for joining us 
in our time, our special time of prayer and meditation for our healthcare providers. We hope that you find a word of encouragement. We hope that you find a word of blessing today. Please put your prayer requests on the comment section. If it is too personal, please inbox us. Secondly, I want to remind all of us, all the healthcare providers that are especially at the bedside to our hospitals team or ICU providers especially, if you have a patient that is alone, that is in need of prayer, let us know we are happy to pray for that patient. If I am local, we are happy to come and pray with them as well. Nobody should die by themselves. Nobody should be able, nobody should be uh, in a hospital bed transitioning their last breath alone. So as we uh, encounter patients on a daily basis that is struggling, that is alone, if they are transitioning over, uh, we are appreciative if you can call us so that we can offer a word of prayer or so that we can offer a word of solace and comfort. I know it could be difficult. Um, so thank you again. Let's get to our next song, Come Thou Found. The title is Come Thou Found. You can find it in, uh, in Google or any hymn that you have. You could find this song. Come Thou Found of Every Blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy praise. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy praise. Stream of mercy, never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee. May I still the goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interpose his Precious blood. Oh, to grace, how. 
traitor, Talion constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind me closer still to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it, seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Isn't that encouraging? That is encouraging. And we are prone to wonder. We are prone to giving up as well. Our weaknesses are... Our defense sometimes is to give up. Our defense most of the time is to give up. On those difficult times, our defense is to let go. But I encourage you, do not let go. I encourage you to hold on. I encourage you to exhibit faith over fear. Exhibit faith over fear. And so I share with you again our words, our words of encouragement, our scripture of comfort, our scripture of comfort. We are here to uplift the families, the frontline families to God in prayer. We are here to uplift our nurses, our doctors, our police officers, our paramedics, the social workers, the, the child care providers, the cashiers at the supermarket that stands without a mask or a gown or a glove on. We are here to uplift the housekeeper. We are here to uplift our government. We are here to uplift our global health care providers and frontline workers in prayer, trusting and believing that God can do something for us as the promises lay out for us in our faith, trusting and knowing that God is going to do something for us. So let us open our words of comfort and encouragement taken from the book of Luke chapter, chapter 12. Taken from the book of Luke chapter 12. And then we're going to finish our reading in the book of Psalms chapter 108. Luke chapter 12 verse 22. Luke chapter 12, verse 22. And I encourage you as you meditate on these words to make it personal. Make those words personal. Make them applicable to you. Make them applicable to your life, to your family, to your circumstance. Make them applicable to the things that you are doing at this moment because the word of God is life. The word of God is light. It's hope. It gives encouragement. It gives comfort. It gives support. It gives wisdom. It gives strength to the weary. The word of God is life. Make these words applicable in your life right now today. So let's read together. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I would say Jesus said to us healthcare providers, right? Jesus said to you, Herlene. Jesus said, to his disciples. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn. Yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable 
you are than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour in his life? Well, since you cannot do these little things, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into fire, how much more will he close you? Oh, you little faith. And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all these things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom. Seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. There's another translation that says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things, everything, those things that we were about before, will be added unto you. Verse 32. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted, where no thief comes near to moth and destroy. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And I love this last passage because it talks about sell your possessions and give to the poor. So healthcare workers, you imagine going into the night shift. You imagine giving all that you have. Is that selling your possession? Yes. You are selling your possession to help an extreme, sick, ill individual. You are giving everything that you have. You are giving all of your courage, all of your might, so that you can save that person, so that they could have hope, they could have some comfort, so that they can have at least something to look forward to. And so remember, this verse is telling us, when we do that, when we do that, we are storing treasures in heaven. How encouraging is that? So thank you. Thank you so much. Let's go into our Psalms of Comfort, Psalms 108. And I will read in your hearing. My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Can we say that in faith, healthcare providers? Can we say that when we are overwhelmed, when we are tired, when we are in despair, when we are not feeling good, even when we're not feeling good, when we see no way out, when our finances have depleted, can we say that in faith? My heart is steadfast, O oh God. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will awaken, excuse me, the dawn. I will praise you, O oh Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the people. For great is your love, higher than the heavens, your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and let your glory be over all the earth. Save us, verse 6, save us and help us with your right hand 
that those you love may be delivered. Can I read that again? Verse 6. Save us and help us with your right hand that those you love may be delivered. God has spoken from his sanctuary and triumph I will parcel out Skem and measured off the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is my helmet, Judah my scepter, Moab is my washbin. Upon Edom I toss my sandals, over Philistia I shout triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God? You who have rejected us and no one and no longer go out of your armies? Give us aid against our enemies, for the help of men is worthless. But with God, we will gain the victory, and he will trample down our enemies. The word of the Lord. Amen. And so all of us here today are here for the common, one common reason. One common reason is to come together to pray for our healthcare providers, to pray for our families, to pray for the frontliners. We are also here today to pray for our government. We are here today to ask God to humiliate our circumstance. We are here today to seek mercy and grace. And so today in a special way, I need your help to not only to pray for those individuals I just mentioned, I need your help also to pray for your patients. To pray for the patients, all of our patients. To pray for our families that have succumbed one way or the other due to this ill virus. I ask you to pray with me for comfort, for peace, for the families that have lost, that have lost a member or for our healthcare workers, families that have lost the fight due to this virus. And if you have a special need, we are here to pray for you as well. Let us turn down the noise so that we can go into prayer. Let us turn off the social media. Let us turn off the news. Find a quiet place. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by Say I cast all my cares 
upon you. I lay my burdens down at your feet. Any time I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. I will cast all my cares upon you. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless. Bless us now, my Savior. I come to thee. Let's pray. With my mouth, O oh Lord, with my heart, I would exalt your name. I will praise your name with all my being. My soul cries, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. O oh, Father in heaven, the creator of everything, the God who was then, the God that will be in forevermore, we cry to the throne of grace for mercy for our health care providers and our frontline workers, God. We cry for mercy. We cry, create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. We cry for mercy, dear God, for lack of compassion sometimes. We ask for the forgiveness of our sins when we said the things that we should not have said, when we went to places that we should not have gone. We ask and plea for the forgiveness of our sins, dear Lord. Sometimes we can be a little bit uncompassionate. Sometimes we could be a little bit mean. Sometimes we could have a nasty glare. Sometimes in the midst of our discomfort, we can even say the things that we don't mean. Please forgive us. And so, Father God, this afternoon, we are coming together, pleading, pleading for mercy for our health care providers and our frontline workers. Father God, it almost seems as if the more we pray, the more gruesome the situation is getting. It's getting bad, Lord. It's getting bad. But you want us to have faith over fear. It's getting bad, Lord. So we are asking to please, Lord, open the eyes of our hearts. Open the eyes of our hearts so that we can feel your presence. We need your help, Lord. We need you, Father God. We need extra strength, Father God. We need extra courage, Father God. We need to be we we don't want to be desynthesized. We don't want to be hardened. We don't want to be stoic, Father God. We don't want to be burnt out. So we need you, Lord, to come through for us. 
Many of us are getting disgusted, we're getting ill, we're getting discouraged. Many of us are about to throw that towel in, dear Lord. Many of us, we're feeling discouraged because one way or the other, not enough PPE, not enough support from our peers, not enough support from our superior, not enough support from our government. We're getting irritated, we're getting disgusted, we're getting tired. We need you to please intervene, Lord. We need you to intervene in our lives. We need you to please provide supernatural comforting, supernatural encouragement, supernatural strength for all of us, Father God. We need you to intervene in our mental health state. We need you to intervene in our spiritual state. We need to have a little bit more faith. And for the ones that don't believe, the ones that don't believe, Lord, please make a way for them, Lord, because there's no way that we are going to survive this if we don't have a little bit of faith. If we don't have hope, there is no way, Lord, we're going to survive this, Father God. There is no way we're going to survive it with sanity, Lord. So we need you to please touch our hearts, touch our souls, touch us, Father God, in a way that we've never been touched before. Please wrap your arms around us, Lord. Wrap your arms so that we can feel your presence. Be with this family members that have lost their loved ones, that have lost their doctors, that have lost their nurses and their respiratory therapists, dear Lord. They are losing their lives, Father God, caring for your people. Please comfort the families, Lord. And oh, Lord... If my days are numbered, help me to be ready for you. If my days are numbered, Father God, help my heart and my soul to receive you well. Help me to trust in you and to trust in your word. Help me to trust in the power of your deliverance. Help me to trust in the power of your blood that shed for my sins. Help me to believe, dear Lord, if my time is short and numbered, Lord. If you call me, Father God, help me to be ready for you. And this is my prayer for all of us that's out there, dear Lord, for all of our family members. All of our family members that have succumbed to this illness, Father God. Touch our souls so that we can feel your presence. Speak to us so that we could answer your call, Lord. We need you, Father God. Oh, Lord, our world is in turmoil. We have ill families left and right. We have left healthcare providers dying left and right. We're making decisions that we don't want to make and we're not comfortable making. We're making hard decisions, Lord. We're not comfortable with these decisions. We're working in extreme dire conditions. We're not comfortable, Lord. Lord, we're transparent with you today. It's hard for us, Lord. It's hard for our providers and the frontliners. And there's even some of us that still don't get it. We don't get what's going on. We don't get what's happening out there. Oh, Father, have mercy on us. In the moments we can't go on, wrap your arms around us. In the times we don't know, Give us a sign of wisdom. When our hearts are getting hardened, soften our hearts so that we can continue to exhibit love to the next one that needs it. Help us to continue to exhibit hope and love. Help us to hold a hand 
a lonely hand, Lord. Bless our families, Lord, our ill families. Be with the pharmacists, be with our leaders, our government, our factories, the bus drivers, the Uber drivers, the cashiers, the housekeepers, our anesthesiologists, our respiratory therapists, the ED providers, the ED nurses, the nurses' aides, the hospitalists. Be with us, Lord. Comfort us. Comfort your people, we pray. Accept our prayer, dear Lord. There's so much more we can say. And don't forget our nursing homes, Lord. Don't forget our nursing homes, our prisons. And please, Lord, don't forget our homeless people. <laughs> Lastly, Lord, don't forget the elderlies that are at home. Continue to quarantine, shut in, that has no hope, no one. It's gruesome, Father. But we trust in you. We trust that you still sit on the throne and that you're going to make things happen on our behalf. We love you, Father. We praise you. We honor you. Please accept our heart's plea. Please accept our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread. Please forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'll give you a minute of quietness. with me and he tells me Amen. Thank you for, for praying with us. Thank you for your time. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for all that you do. And sometimes we feel like we are alone in this fight. Sometimes we feel like the journey is extremely difficult. Sorry. But we got this. Faith over fear. Faith over fear. We can conquer this together. We can conquer this in prayer. 
we can conquer this by pulling together, by sharing. I'm sorry, I got a hair in my eye. We can conquer this by sharing a word of encouragement. We can conquer this by sharing a word of hope. We can conquer this together by not letting each other go. It's um, some difficult times, I agree. I like this song. I'm going to I'm going to share this song with you. The title is called In the Garden. I feel compelled to share this song with you. I was going to close, but I feel compelled to share this song with you. It's called In the Garden. I'm going to play it for you, okay? I'm getting the music ready. I'm sorry. I'll find it. All right. It's called, I Come to the Garden. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God, this talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet. The birds hush their singing. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we 
there, none other has ever known. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none others has ever known. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Yes, that is a beautiful promise. And so, everyone, as we part from one another, may the words of the Lord and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in His sight. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord shine his light upon you. May the Lord fill you with abundance of joy. May the Lord continue to impart grace, peace, compassion, forbearance, patience, 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 faith, and love. May you have so much of these fruits that you have plenty to share with others, to share with your patient and everyone in your corner. Lastly, may the Lord give you comfort if you've lost a loved one. May the Lord give you strength if you are dealing with a sick one. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for being soldiers Thank you for being missionaries. Thank you for holding on even when you didn't feel like it. Remember, remember to surrender. Surrender your heart of thanksgiving every day. There is something that is good in your life right now. So let's list them one by one. And even if there's nothing good in your life right now, Faith over fear. God bless you all. Thank you for all you do. You are valuable. You are important. You are a gem. We value what you do, what you're doing, what you'll continue to do for these two weeks to come. For these two weeks to come, we continue to value. Until next time, tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. Share with your friends. Share with your neighbor. Tell them there is a sacred place where we are receiving and sharing with one another words of hope in this hopeless time. Be well, be safe, and remember to keep the healthy body strong as well. You know those green leafy vegetables that you never liked? Maybe it's time that we can start eating them as well. Vegetables, fruits, plenty of water. Don't forget your lemon juice. Don't forget your lime juice if you don't have. Even a little bit of sour orange would be great to add in your water. Your hot teas, perfect. Don't forget those as well. Your healthy grains, don't forget those. And your vitamin C, probiotic, if your vitamin D level is low, make sure you take care of that as well. And I know it's a hard time to sleep, but with meditation and prayer, that can be a good result. With all that we just said, with everything that we just shared, faith over hope, healthcare workers and providers, and all our frontline workers, thank you for what you do during this extreme difficult time. God bless you. God be with you. And guess what? The reward is stored in heaven for you. Have a beautiful day. God loves you. I love you. Bye.